on the right track. We can say today that Galileo was on the right track, was on the right track for his persistent pursuit of what once seemed like a silly cosmology, like a silly cosmology. On the right track. We can say today that Galileo was on the right track for his persistent pursuit of what once seemed like a silly cosmology, like a silly cosmology. We can say today that Galileo was on the right track for his persistent pursuit of what once seemed like a silly cosmology has by now created the material needed to defend itself against all those who will accept the view only if it is told in a certain way in a certain way on the right track on the right track it was on the right track only if it is told in a certain way only if it is told in a certain way, in certain magical phrases, in certain magical phrases. On the right track. The idea of a method that contains firm, unchanging, and absolutely binding principles for conducting the business of science meets considerable difficulty when confronted with the results of historical research. We find then that there is not a single rule, however plausible, and however firmly grounded in epistemology, that is not violated at some time or another. It becomes evident that such violations are not accidental events. They are not results of insufficient knowledge or inattention that might have been avoided. On the contrary, we see that they are necessary for progress. Indeed, one of the most striking features of recent discussions in the history of philosophy of science is the realization that events and developments such as the invention of atomism in antiquity, the Copernican Revolution, the rise of modern atomism, kinetic theory, dispersion theory, stereochemistry, quantum theory, etc. The gradual emergence of the wave theory of light occurred only because some thinkers either decided not to be bound by certain obvious methodological rules or because they unwittingly broke them. This liberal practice, I repeat, is not just a fact of the history of science, it is both reasonable and absolutely necessary for the growth of knowledge. More specifically, one can show the following. Given any rule, however fundamental or necessary for science, there are always circumstances when it is advisable not only to ignore the rule, but to adopt its opposite. For example, there are circumstances when it is advisable to introduce, elaborate, and defend ad hoc hypotheses. These hypotheses, which contradict well-established and generally accepted experimental results, or hypotheses whose content is smaller than the content of the existing and empirically ad adequate alternative, or self-consisting hypotheses, and so on. There are even circumstances, and they occur rather frequently, when argument loses its forward-looking aspect and becomes a hindrance to progress. Nobody would claim that the teaching of small children is exclusively a matter of argument. And almost everyone now agrees that what looks like a result of reason, the mastery of a language, the existence of a richly articulated perceptual world, logical ability, is due partly to indoctrination and partly to a process of growth that proceeds with the force of natural law. The force of natural law. On the right track. 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 On the right track.